I want to bring the gang back now. Megan Fitzpatrick and Mike Crawley, who've been there all day in Mississauga, Ontario, watching it unfold. Hannah Thibodeau here joining me in studio. This is a moment when someone is a new leader of a party that was almost decimated, lost mm -hmm. its official party status in the last election. This is a, a big spotlight for him. This is probably the biggest spotlight uh, Stephen Del Duca is going to have in the next little while. Uh, what I found out of this speech, and I, I know that uh, the gang on the floor Mike and Megan know this much better than I do, but I found it was one big thank you. And at a point, I'm kind of going, well, at the Academy Awards, they have an orchestra that kind of cuts you off. So I feel like he needed to wrap it up a bit, and I wanted to know more about him, what he was going to do moving forward. How is he going to go after Ontario Premier Doug Ford? Just give us a little taste of something. Give me a line out of that, because I feel I know more about his wife and his his kids than I know about him. I guess his campaign would say, well, during the course of this campaign, I told you a little bit more about what I'm going to but do. People still don't know who he, he is. Mm -hmm. And let's be frank, he doesn't have a seat in the House of Commons. You were talking to Megan about this before he uh, was giving his thank, thank you speech. And I want to go a little bit on the other side of what Megan was saying. So Megan is saying, look, he can get out in the community, he can start getting new candidates. But Take a look at what happened to Jagmeet Singh. He didn't have a seat in the House of Commons for the longest time. People didn't get to know him. And then we're heading into an election campaign. People still didn't know who Jagmeet Singh was. I know Ontario is a much smaller province, so it's easier that way mm -hmm. uh, than a big country. But still, he needs the name recognition. He has two years to do it, and he has to start right away. That certainly is. You have illuminated one of the big challenges, Mike Crawley, and that is name recognition. Your thoughts on what we just heard there. This is our, our first message from the man who wants to be the next premier. I mean, what struck me from that speech was what was missing. I didn't hear him mention Doug Ford once. And I yes. was I was kind of waiting for that because I'm going to pick that clip and use that in my stories. Uh -huh. And it wasn't there. Uh, he did now mention Ford in his opening speech to the delegates. But that was at 9 o'clock this morning and didn't have the same sort of drama or energy necessarily. But he did lay out a little bit more of his vision for the province in that uh, morning speech. And, you know, perhaps they're playing the long game. They're figuring that, you know, it's two years until the election. Uh, I'm told that he's going to have an election readiness committee uh, announced as early as next week. And so they're they're certainly looking ahead to the election. Maybe they just decided that they didn't need to get in the poke against uh, Doug Ford in the in the victory speech. And on that issue, though, of um, whether having a seat at Queen's Park is an advantage or not, the one thing that I would point out, too, is that Patrick Brown, the previous leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservatives before uh, Doug Ford, he was an unknown, even though he had a seat in the legislature. Mm -hmm. I had this thing where I went out to Missis here to Mississauga and I, I showed people an 8x10 glossy <laughs> photo of him, and I had to go around to almost a dozen people in the parking lot before anybody could say who he was. And that was a year before the election. He'd been in the in the legislature for uh, a couple of years by that time. So, you know, there's there are mixed feelings about whether having a seat uh, helps or not. Uh, you know, Del Duca will have some sort of a way of getting himself into the media, certainly, because he has, uh, you know, he's got a lot of close connections in the press gallery at uh, Queen's Park, and so um, I expect we will be hearing from him. Uh, we'll see to what extent that actually gets his message out to ordinary Ontarians. Megan, if it is a little he's surprising shy, that we so didn't hear... He, Go ahead. He's familiar with Queen's Park. Yes. Well, I was going to say, he's not shy. He's familiar speaking to the media, and so uh, just in terms of what Mike was saying, it, it won't be as much of a challenge for him to get media attention is maybe Kate Graham or Brenda Hollingsworth the like really unknowns in this contest who who had even less of a profile than Stephen Del Duca who has been an MPP and a cabinet minister at Queen's Park. Speaking of talking to the media, we are told that Stephen Del Duca will make himself available to answer reporters' questions on scene. So, of course, that is something they were watching for. As right now, as you can see on your screen there, he's making his way through the crowd and thanking supporters, uh, taking a victory lap, if you will, around the world. Uh, around the room, rather. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Megan, I want to go back to you on the point of Doug Ford, though, that uh, Hannah and Mike touched on, and the fact that his name wasn't even mentioned there in the thank you speech. You, you might expect to hear a little bit of a Doug Ford lookout. I'm, I'm coming for you now, but you have watched this campaign play out. What do you expect we'll hear from this new Liberal leader when it comes to taking on the current Premier of Ontario? Yeah, well, I just want to mention, even though 
Doug Ford wasn't mentioned in the speech. His presence is still being felt in this room. The PCs are here, Jennifer. Uh, House Leader Paul Calandra was standing right behind us, behind Mike and I, watching Stephen Del Duca's speech. They are here, they are ready to react. They are already labeling Stephen Del Duca the Del Duca Wynn government. They are tying him to his predecessor, Kathleen Wynn, who obviously uh, was leading the party before and uh, suffered that crushing defeat for her party. So uh, just wanting to mention that the PCs are, are wasting no time trying to define Stephen Del Duca in terms of uh, his profile. In terms, So there will be a battle of him trying to define himself for those Ontarians that don't know him. The PCs are, are already jumping on that. Um, your question to me, Jennifer, was about Doug Ford and maybe what we'll hear from Stephen Del Duca about him. Well, even during his speech this morning, he made education a pretty big theme uh, of his speech this morning. For those outside of Ontario not familiar with what's going on right now in Ontario, a lot of uh, teacher strikes. The uh, Doug Ford government in the midst of contract negotiations, which have been dragging on for months and not going very well, that have led to uh, numerous strikes uh, among the board. Stephen, Stephen Del Duca promising to restore public education. We heard him talk a lot about that. Stephen Del Duca will get at those big uh, policy areas that Doug Ford has been losing some popularity on and, and having some trouble with. The Liberals, I expect, will be seizing on some of those. Healthcare is another one that he brought up in his speech, too. And so well, one thing, too, that Del Duca's advisors have been telling me is that um, one of the things that Ontarians expect from a progressive conservative government, if they vote for it, is competence in doing government well. And so there's a hope among the Ontario Liberals that some of the uh, scandals that have been going on within the Ontario, uh, within the province here, including uh, license plates that were redesigned by the PCs that can't be read uh, at nighttime, is a sign that the Ford government is less than competent. And uh, Del Duca is going to try to pitch himself as kind of a safe pair of hands to run the province uh, for those people who feel that the Ford years are proving to be a little too chaotic. Uh, so that's one thing that I think they're hoping for is that that in some ways the Ford government will hand Stephen Del Duca some ammunition as to explain why he would be the right person to take over as premier. And a key thing too that he's going to need to do though is to explain to those anti-Ford voters, if you could pool them all together, why they should pick him, you know, someone who was from the previous government, over Andrea Horvath of the uh, opposition New Democrats. And that's that's going to be another way that he's going to need to define himself. And it was interesting to hear in Del Duca's speech this morning, he took aim at Andrea Horvath, which uh, surprised me a little bit that he wasn't just going after Doug Ford, but he targeted Horvath too, essentially saying she's been MIA, that she hasn't been an effective official opposition leader. And they will use that argument, the Liberals, right. in the upcoming campaign too, to say, don't choose, if you're anti Ford, you don't want to see the PCs Megan, stay in power, I have to jump don't in. choose the NDP as the alternative. I have to jump in for time, guys. We could go on for another couple of hours. There's so much to watch <laughs> yes, unfold. <laughs> but for now, I want to thank our wonderful panel here, Megan Fitzpatrick, Mike Crawley, and Hannah Thibodeau here in studio.